Hi everyone, welcome to the Merlin's Magic Workshop. My name is Jeremy and I'm really happy to welcome you on this very first video of the channel. This video is the beginning of a series on how to paint Space Marines in simplified NMM effect. So NMM stands for non-metallic metal. It's an effect that consists of creating metallic reflections using standard paint. We could even say it's an optical illusion we try to create. And for most of the illusions, it only works if you follow certain specific rules. So this is what we are going to talk in this video. So I call it simplified version because we are not going to aim for the most realistic effect. We will work with a very simple light setup and we will mostly ignore some complex parameters like the subtle variations of color and shape of the light reflection that are induced by the environment of the miniature. And we're also going to play a little bit with the rule for the placement of some reflections so that the miniature will look great from any point of view, even if it's not the most realistic choice. So today we are going to focus on the blue scheme to obtain something like that. And in next episodes we will explore other colors. By the way, you can follow my work on Instagram and time to time I will submit polls to help me define what will be the subject of the next videos. One more thing to keep in mind is that I am going to show you my way of doing NMM. It's not the only way, of course, and it's certainly not the best one. But in the end, it works pretty well, so I still wanted to share my techniques with you. So if you want to help this channel, you can subscribe, uh, like the videos and share with your friends. And if you want to help me even more, I just created a new Patreon page. So for now, it's just the basic support with no significant rewards, but I will add more and more content in the near future. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm finally done with this introduction. Now you can sit back, relax, and I will catch you at the end for some final words. So first thing first, we need to define the color scheme. For the middle tone, I will use Magic Blue from Barejo, a rich and powerful blue. For the light tones, I will use Electric Blue, which I will push towards the whites for the most intense highlights. On the dark side, I will use Imperial Blue and I will mix it with black for the most intense shadows. And with that, we get a very interesting palette with a lot of contrast and punch. However, I will never use pure black or pure white on the miniature. So actually, I will reduce the color range from a deep dark blue to a cold off-white. For the miniature, I will use a standard Intercessor Space Marine. Nothing fancy, but still a very nice model. Though I didn't glue the right arm, so later I will have a better access to the chest. I will focus first on the right leg only, so I can show you all the steps of my NMM workflow. We start with the base coat, the darkest tone of our color scheme. So a mix of 50% black and 50% imperial blue. And I cover the entire miniature with a nice and solid coat. Then I'm using magic blue or middle tone to lock in the primary reflections. During the first phase of the paint job, I'm using only the layering technique, as simple as that. I apply two or three thin coats to make sure we have a nice and uniform result. Primary reflections are the most important light. They basically define where the main source of light is located with respect to the miniature. In that case, I'm going for a zenithal lighting. So the source is supposed to be on top and far away from the miniature. And so we need to place the reflections on the top of each section of the armor. But the most important thing is to maintain the consistency of the light orientation across the different parts of the model. In the end, we want all the reflections to drive us to the main source of light. To ensure this consistency, I'm painting a sort of line of light from the top of the leg to the tip of the foot. For the next step, I'm building up the light intensity. For that, I'm using the brighter color electric blue and I go over the same areas as before, but reducing the surface to paint. And then I mix electric blue with white to represent even more intense highlights. Once again, I'm using nothing more than the basic layering technique. For now, the goal is not to create a fine transition, but a coarse gradation, like a staircase, that will serve as a solid foundation for later work. Later, we will come back with other techniques to smooth out all these transitions. As you can see, once we lock in the reflections, we don't need to think about the placement of the light anymore. We simply go over the same zones again and again with brighter color while reducing more and more the surface of painting. So that's why the initial step when we place the first reflection is so important. So we should take the time to think about it and about the light consistency. Now 
it's time to work on the dark tones. We first make a mix of magic blue and imperial blue and we paint a strip around the same areas already painted before. Then, with pure imperial blue, we go one step further and paint a larger strip. When I looked into the NMM effect for the first time, I used to think that the placement of the light reflection was the most important parameter. Of course it's important, but not the only thing to consider. The shape and the intensity of the reflections also play a major role in the success of the effect. For what concerns the shape, one approach that works well for simplified NMM is to determine what's the basic shape that matches the most the part you are painting. For example, the knee or the foot have a sort of spherical shape, so painting circular reflection is a good start. For the leg, on the other hand, it's more like a cylinder, so I would paint rectangles instead of circles. Primary reflections are usually the biggest in terms of size and also the most intense in terms of light, as they come directly from the main source of light. Next, we will work on secondary reflections, also known as counter reflections. Those are in general less intense, smaller in shape and with a different orientation with respect to the primary reflections. In that case, I am placing the secondary reflections in the interior of the leg to represent the light that would come from the ground. Generally speaking, secondary reflections don't come directly from the main source of light, but from the light reflected by the environment of the scene. It could be from the ground, or it could be emitted by a building or anything in the close surrounding of the subject. So it represents light that would have bounced onto an object before bouncing again on the miniature and reach our eyes. And that's why it's usually less intense compared to primary reflections. And for the paint job, lower light intensity means that we are not going to use the brighter range of the color scheme. We are pushing the secondary reflections to electric blue, but not brighter than that. And just as before, we build up the staircase gradation to the shadows using the layering technique. Now it's time to work on the tertiary reflections, and those are usually emitted by the miniature itself. Indeed, we just painted primary and secondary reflections, which illuminate their surrounding and so possibly generate tertiary reflections. So here the goal is to determine if some areas of the armor could receive light emitted by the reflections already painted on the miniature. To me, those third level reflections are very important to correctly represent the level of reflectivity of the material we want to create. It could make the difference between a nice looking polished armor or a rough corroded metallic surface. And we finally arrive to the most exciting step, smoothing all the transitions. So we already established a coarse staircase gradation with all the colors in there. And this is a perfect foundation before starting the blending process. I really like working with the staircase gradation technique, not only because it's very easy to apply, but also because for each color in the scale, the neighbor colors are very close in terms of hue and brightness, so it makes the blending process much easier. So for the blending, I'm mostly using fat glaze, which is a paint consistency between the layer and the usual glaze. It allows to create semi-transparent layers, as for the glaze, but with sufficient amount of pigment so that we can make a nice blending in two or three layers maximum. But still, it's a diluted paint, so we need to pay attention to the direction in which we pull or push the paint. 
In general, there is less pigment at the beginning of the stroke and much more when we take off the brush at the end of the stroke. And because of that, it's better to end the brush stroke in the color zone that matches the color on the brush itself. So for example, with the brush loaded with paint number 2, I make tiny strokes in diagonal from zone number 1 to zone number 2. Then, with the color number 1 on the brush, I will pull the pigment from zone number 2 to zone number 1, but this time with the strokes following the other diagonal. And I will repeat the same process two or three times until I get a nice and smooth transition. And finally, using the usual thin glaze consistency, I will apply a dark tone filter over the entire transition. Of course, it takes a bit of time to understand what movement works the best and how to properly thin down the paint. But as soon as you master those parameters, this blending technique is actually very fast and very effective to create seamless transitions. First, I'm focusing on the bright tones, so the range between magic blue and the mix electric blue and white. And after it's done, I will take care of the dark tones using the very same approach. With this technique, you can do as many layers as you want. It all depends on how smooth and detailed you want to make your transitions. The more time you spend on it, the better the result will be. So that's the reason why it's very important to think about the project before starting it. Do I want to make 45 or 50 miniatures for a gaming army? Or is it just a small squad for a small diorama? Or maybe it's for a painting contest? If you know what you are aiming for, you can adjust the process and deploy the correct resources to get there.
Finally, to complete the blending, I am using pure imperial blue to glaze over the transitions and hide possible tiny defects and visible brush strokes. For the next step, I am doing the lining. This is also an important part of the NMM effect, it helps to redefine the different zones, to reinforce the highlights, and in general to make the miniature more readable. I am doing the lining in three steps. First, with the central color magic blue, I go over all the edges, regardless their orientation. Then, with a lighter color electric blue, I go over the edges that are oriented towards the top and close to reflection points I already painted before. And finally, with a mix of electric blue and white, I will boost the highlights even more. As a last step, I am pushing the primary reflections one step further. With a mix of 25% electric blue and 75% white, I am putting some tiny dots of light on the edges facing the brightest primary reflections. And that concludes the NMM effect on the right leg. For the other parts of the miniature, I will follow the very same process.
So I tried to make a tutorial with a sufficient detail so you can see my actual workflow and all the techniques I use, but I did not want to make it 4 hours long, so now you will only see the main steps of the paint job. On the other hand, I did not want to compress all the work into a 10 minutes video, and especially I didn't want to make people think that we can achieve this kind of effect without spending significant time on it. Making a full NMM scheme like this takes time and patience. There is no shortcut. If you want details and precision, you need to take the time to learn, understand and practice as much as possible. This is especially true for NMM, where the understanding of the shape, intensity and placement of the reflections is critical, more than the actual quality of the paint job. As I said in the introduction, this is a simplified version of NMM. Here we are ignoring some complex parameters like the shadows casted by the miniature onto itself, for example below the arms, or we don't try to represent all the subtle variations of tone, brightness and even shape of the reflections induced by the environment of the miniature. And we also greatly simplified the way we could place the highlights, making decisions that are not exactly realistic but that helps to make the miniature looks good from almost any point of view. In the end, for this kind of miniature and at this scale, I think the simplified version already works very well. For the head, I am taking the liberty to offset the position of the primary reflection. With the zenithal lighting, I should have painted the light on the very top of the head. But in this case, I prefer to bring the light a little bit forward, on the forehead actually, in order to bring the attentions to the eyes of the miniature. This is not a big change, just a little infringement of the rules I described earlier. It's not going to break the illusion, but I still wanted to mention it. So, the Space Marine shoulder pads are always tricky when it comes to NMM. As I said earlier, 
One simple way to define the shape of the reflection is to determine what is the basic shape, sphere or cylinder, that matches the most the part you are painting. If it's a sphere, you can go with the circle shape. If it's a cylinder, better to paint rectangles. It's not the ultimate rule by any means, but it gives a good starting point. For the shoulder parts though, the top part is close to a sphere, while the bottom part turns into a cylinder. So we are in between what I just said before. Personally, I prefer to go with circles. So here again, I am breaking the rule concerning the placement of the reflections. I am painting more light spots than I should, but it makes the large surface of the pad more interesting. Especially when we will draw the chapter symbol, but that will be the topic of another video. And at last, after about 6 hours of painting, the blue armor in NMM style is finally done. And now we can take care of the other elements of the miniature. So let's start with the parts made of steel or any metal of that sort. Again, in the non-metallic style. The color scheme is based on heavy charcoal, a dark grey. We then bright it up with the same electric blue we use for the armor. It will give a nice bluish tone to the metal. And then for the light tones, we add white to the mix. Once again, we will first establish the staircase gradation before going back to the individual transitions with the blending technique I presented before. With that color scheme, I am painting all the joints between the armor plates, the exhaust of the backpack and some of the details I want to see in bluish grey.
some tiny details like the joints, the paint areas are so small that I won't need to spend too much time on smoothing the transitions. Only one layer of fat glaze will do the trick. However, it remains important to maintain the consistency of the light across the miniature, so the position and the intensity of the reflections should match between the different parts of the model. In particular, I try to follow the line of light I defined earlier, to confirm the position of the main light source and to strengthen the NMM effect. Then, to have some variations in the materials, I will make NMM silver. We will use the same paints as for the NMM steel, but the base coat will be brighter and with more blue in it. And to maintain a good contrast, we will go higher in brightness and add more white to the final mix. For the main body of the bolt gun, I will use the NMM steel recipe that we discussed just before. As you can see, I always go through the same workflow. First the staircase gradation, then the blending, and I wrap up the effect with the lining and some super bright light spots. Now let's talk about NMM gold. There is probably as many gold recipes as there are miniature painters in the world. Personally, I like to start with a desaturated green, like the heavy grey from Vallejo. It gives a nice look of old gold. Then I lighten the base color with heavy brown, and then with heavy gold brown, a warm yellowish brown design, especially for gold NMM. For the light tones, I use pale yellow, which I mix with white for the brightest areas. In the end we got a relatively complex color scheme, with a lot of different paints, but this is how we create a rich and interesting gold. Here I make sure to place the gold reflection in the same way I place the lights, on the shoulder pads and on the arms. 
When all the lights are consistent, especially when different metallic materials are next to each other, it really makes the magic of the NMM pop-up. With the NMM Golds, we can also use orange tints, especially in the shadows. But here, with the rest of the armor being blue, the orange color would have created a strong color contrast that could unbalance the overall look of the miniature. So in this case, I prefer the old gold style with the greenish shadows and desaturated highlights. For the lining, it's the same method as for the other materials. I do it in several steps with brighter and brighter mix to intensify the light reflections. For the optical lens on the helmet, I actually want to create a nice contrast and draw the attention of the viewer. So using a bright orange color seems to be a good idea this time. And the miniature is finally done. So we made this nice blue armor in NMM style and we also created non-metallic steel, silver and gold. So this is it, uh, I tried to show you all the steps of my workflow and all the little thought I had during the process of making non-metallic metals, especially with the blue skin. It took me about 10 hours to complete this miniature. It might take you more if you try it for the first time, but after some practice you will see it will get much, much faster. 
I will say it one more time, but this is of course not the only way to do NMM and probably not even the best way, but this is how I do it at the moment. But in the end, the effect works and I think it's not a bad way to get started with this NMM style, which I actually enjoy a lot. In the next episode, we will continue with the NMM workflow, but this time with not the color. So stay tuned and keep an eye on my Instagram account where I will ask regularly what color I should treat in the next video. So this is the end of this video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you have learned a few things. I will see you in the next episode and in the meantime, I wish you a very nice day.